record. Yeah. Mate, you need a new chain. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just take this chain off. <laughs> off, mate, because it just gets in gets in way all the time. And take my jewelry. Mate, how, mate, how heavy how heavy is that chain? I don't know. I think it's about uh, two, about eight ounce, seven and a half, eight ounce. I think. I had that big stupid one, didn't I? With anchor on, you know, when I got kidnapped. Yeah. Uh, I thought, oh, I never had it on though, did I? They were like, where's your chain? They knew everything. They knew serial number on my Breitling. I sold it to my friend Russell. The... No, sorry. I sold my Breitling to my friend Russell from Kilners. Is the... that the window guy? Yeah, pardon? Is that the guy that's got the window shop? No, 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 no. That's Kit. That's Cunnings with that. No, this is another, another friend of mine. He's called Russell. Like, he's Jason who owns Ledger Frames. Uh, and the anchor chain I had made into two. I had two of them made, didn't I? And I give him that one. I give him it cheap. The price of it now, he's had a right touch. But uh, I just thought, yeah, I don't need stuff like that. You, you know, all that nah. materialistic stuff. So, and plus, it just gets you a good hiding if people are hungry, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you get took in a van, don't you? And you get kicked out middle of nowhere. And you, we, we know on. Do you um, know, look, look at the worst, yeah. Oh my, a woman took me in, but it wasn't nice. But you know, that's another story way back east, right? Uh, let's get back to boxing. Uh, I can explain it. Eddie Earns show. What do you think to it at weekend, Terry? So, okay, so two ways of looking at the show. If you told me that. I could sit in front of Sky on a Saturday, watch Dillian against Povetkin, Katie Taylor rematch for soon, Congo versus Clay, and Babbage versus God knows who. I wouldn't complain about that. The minute you tell me I've got to pay for it, I've got a real issue because none of those are fights I really want to see. Yeah. You know, Congo versus Clay, I, I don't mind. It's an undercard fight, and you could put that anywhere, right? For me, that's a really good undercard fight because that could realistically headline the next gen show. So I think it passes the test of an undercard fight. Yeah. But T Taylor Pursuit, okay, bit of a grudge match, but I'm not happy because I didn't give Pursuit enough time to prepare because it was meant to be Serrano. So I don't think it's a fair fight. But White versus Povetkin is just a stay busy fight. Let's be honest, it's a stay busy fight. Yeah. And we shouldn't be paying for stay busy fights, I don't think. It doesn't make sense. And you know what they say, Russ, right? They always say, if you didn't pay pay-per-view, you'd never get this fight made. I'm okay with Dillian never fighting Pavekin. That, 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 that's not the question we're asking as boxing fans, is it? We're not going, I wonder what would happen if Dillian fought Pavekin. We're not. The only person who was ever asking that was Dave Caldwell. And look at where he's ended up. Oh, don't even start me on that one, yeah. <laughs> Mate, you look genuinely deflated by the fact that this card is pay-per-view. I am, yeah, because do you remember my video when I got the threats, threatening phone calls when I first started my channel? I think Dillian fought Parker, didn't he? Yeah. I was getting threatening phone calls from people with South London accents because one of my best friends is from Bermondsey and his best friend's from Brixton. So I know what that accent's like. It's like that David Hay accent. It's so different to something like Mark Tibbs's accent, isn't it? You know, Mark Tibbs is like, how's it going, Ras? All right, well... That, the Bermondsey one, is totally different to East Ham. Mark Tibbs was an East Ham boy, isn't he? So I knew it were probably some new Dillian knew, and they said, listen, you're slagging this pay-per-view off, Porky, but you're taking money out of a man's mouth. And I can understand that, but this is how I look at it. I'm going on what the criteria is because I've seen emails about what the criteria were back in the day back in the day when Carl Froch couldn't get a pay-per-view for fighting guys like Jean Pascal, Jermaine Taylor. He couldn't even get a sky slot. Uh, Andre Dirul, Kessler first fight, Boutte, all them fights. I don't mean to refer, but I don't like to hark back to Carl Froch all the time, but because I know his career that well. And he fought in an era where there wasn't much money about and I see, I, I know what the pay per view criteria were, and the pay per view criteria now is watered down. For example, Froch Boutte. 
Butte were pound for pound, 30 and 0, 10 defences. Frotch Butte was on non pay per view Saturday night. Now, we've just had a non pay per view Saturday night with Cheeseman and Eggington. Now, Cheeseman Eggington is a totally different to Frotch Butte. So, is it a watered down product in the last eight years? Okay, so let, let, let's, let's just focus in on Parker versus Dillian. That fight made sense because we needed to see that Dillian was a level above Joseph Parker, right? We needed to. The problem was, it was sold to us like, if Dillian beats Parker, he fights Wilder. So I can see why people pay for the pay-per-view, but they were misled. I really wish what they'd done at that point is said, if Dillian can beat Parker, he gets the rematch with Joshua. Then I would have been like, okay, this is what I'm paying for. Because I can see the, I can see the storyline. But at the moment, it just feels like we're just topping someone's bank account up. That's what it feels like at the moment. And I don't necessarily agree with doing that. And the reason I say that, Russ, is if you really think about where boxing is, no one needs boxing, right? At this moment in time, we've had four or five months where we haven't had any boxing right? We hadn't had any boxing and we were fine. We survived. And now you've got people, they don't know if they're going to be made redundant. They're on furlough. They're this, they're that. They're watching the pennies. You know, I know people were trying to live on a tenner a day, right? Huh. And so when you're charging these people who are boxing fans, when you're charging them like 20 odd quid to, to watch this, you're not giving them something to get them excited. Like, I wouldn't mind. Like if they just said, okay, we're just going to do Joshua versus Dillian non-title fight and make that pay-per-view I'm kind of okay with what do you mean like I'll a one fight it. a one fight show Terry just one fight no you want yeah I'd want a couple on there because I want to get revved up you know I, I want to get annoyed about the judges I want to get annoyed about rubbish fights and then I want the main event yeah uh, just something like that like you know if you're really going to give back to the sport do that or Eddie and Frank get together and just go guys we're going to give you a fight and it's going to be Joyce versus Dillian White. I don't care what it was, Russ, but boxing had to give back to its fans, and boxing chose not to. It chose to look after itself. And if you look at the zone now, the zone are basically saying, Canelo, you can't pick and choose your opponents. BT Sport are kind of pissed off with what they've been given by Frank. And I don't think Sky are overly enthusiastic over what Hearn was able to deliver for them. So everyone's in crisis, but no one seems willing to want to fix it. Yeah, I see what you mean, mate, yeah. I see what you mean. I mean, this is how I look at it, right? Look, I give Eddie and Lowe to stick that, but let's just get, let's just, let's just have it, have it right here. He's a hard worker, right? So we have to respect that, don't we? It's not his fault he's been born into money and fetched up in a big mansion. So whether we have to respect that or not, I don't know. We have to respect his dad for putting him in that situation. But what cheeses me off is the manipulation of how they're going about it. For example, the dressing, basically the polishing turds are part there. The manipulating social media with bot accounts, the YouTubers that are hanging out of the back of him, and they know they are, Coogan, Rob Tebbett, Michelle Phelps, Gareth A. Davis, journalist, and all the rest of them, Hanging out of the back of them. Nobody's mentioning anything about drug testing. It's like a taboo subject at the moment, drug testing. We've got two drug cheats going into the ring and nobody's mentioning drug testing because if either of them fail, the old stack of cards will come tumbling down. That's why there's no drug testing. Nobody's mentioning it. Usually Eddie Earn comes on IFL, doesn't he? Going on about drug testing and going on about how many times they've been tested and that. There's been none of that, has there? No. I, I think we're now at the point where Hearns realised he created a rod for his own back by always talking about VADA testing. And so he's just probably gone off. It's part of my language, sorry. He's had, to, he's had to shut up on it because, listen, we all know most of them are on it, aren't they, basically? We all know what's well, 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 he embarrassed himself because go back to last year with, with the Rebass fight. He kept hitting us over the head with the fact that everyone was tested. And then there was a failed test and it was done by UCAD. And then all of a sudden, UCAD weren't credible. They were trying to disrespect UCAD. It was 
was absolutely insane. Like, I think we can all agree that the A sample and the B sample were tested and both had Nandi on it. Yeah. We can now, let, let, let's not pretend otherwise. But people just don't discuss it now because it's, it's bad for business. Yeah. And all of these guys live off the Sky marketing budget. That's what they live off. So don't you, don't you ever wonder why these guys don't file accounts, Russ? They never file accounts, do they? Like you can't find Boxing Social's real numbers. You can't find IFL's real numbers. You can't find behind the gloves oh, real deep. numbers. That's a bit deep, that, isn't it? <laughs> no, but you can't. So, yeah. so where's the money going? Are they just getting this money in PayPal transfers and then that's just what they, they bank and the tax man doesn't know about this? I, mate, I don't know. And I don't want to cast any aspersions. But I find it strange that if you look at IFL's accounts, it's 32 grand. Yeah, that's all. That's all they made in a year, 32 grand. Now, all Cougar's got maybe 32 grand. All the I've made from Porky's Corner, we don't get 32p a day. <laughs> no, but you know, Russ, you're right, though. When you talk about what Hearn's been able to do, what he's really been able to do is, in psychology, they call it anchoring, right? And you know this, Russ, right? Because you, you used to sell cars. Mm. If, if, if I tell you, and 2004 E55 AMG is worth seven grand, right? Its real market value might be five and a half grand. If I tell five you it's seven grand. Auction. Five grand at auction. Hey, see, I'm not bad with my numbers, Paul. It's a 50 <laughs> grand car, though, brand new back in the day. Yeah. But I so, so you. Way, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem you've got with that particular car, it's 10 mile to gallon. So every mile that you're doing it, it costs you 65 pence. So it's only a car that you're going to get out on a Sunday. That's how I'd sell it. Because you're not going to use it as an everyday car here. Because you can't put your shopping in it. You can't get your mates in it. It's just a Sunday smoker, isn't it? My, mate used to, my mate's got one, Darren. No, he had one. My mate Darren had one. Mandy had one. And they were, all, they were all right to blast about in on a Sunday. But it's not an everyday car, is it? No, no and the temperamental as well. But Russ. Year old, yeah. So you take that car. If I tell someone, mate, this is a seven and a half grand car. Yeah. So he'll say to me, I don't believe you. I think it's worth six and a half. Yeah. And I'll let him win. But I know it's a five grand car, right? But anchoring is the idea that I put something in a space I want it to be. Now, it doesn't matter how ridiculous it is. You're never going to get to the truth because it's too far. From where I've taken it, it's too much energy for you to get to the truth. So what Hearn will do is Hearn will... He did it with Wilder a lot. Remember, he was like, yeah, Deontay Wilder only makes two million a fight. And so Twitter just ran off with that one. Yeah, he only makes two million a fight. No one bothered to check what Deontay Wilder makes. Wilder's, no been, Wilder's been on more than that, hasn't he? Exactly. But once Hearn says it, people believe it. Yeah, but I, I've, really I've got a relationship with, with somebody who knows Wilder. And let me tell you, Deontay Wilder, before these last few big fights that he's had, He's been taking home loads and loads and loads more money than that. But when Eddie Hearn says it, people believe it because he's got the platform. He's got Sky, Dazone, Matchroom Boxing, YouTube, IFL, Behind the Gloves, Boxing Social, and any others that are hanging out of the back of him. So he can put a statement out and they can spread the gospel. And then he's got all these yeah. bot accounts on Twitter. They do it all. But what it's called is... Fake news. Yeah, because Russ, do you remember when Eddie was on The Boxing Voice? There was the American radio show. And yeah. they got him on there. And they got Wilder and Shelly Finkel. Yeah. You notice how, how he was like a scared little kid when he suddenly had to be confronted with the things he said. He was just backpedaling. He was yeah. backtracking. He didn't sound like the Eddie that we're used to. Because he's not in control, is he? But you can't blame him, can you? But he's, got, he's put himself in a situation now where... Everybody knows what the scripts are now after 10 years. We all can read it. Even casuals who email me now who are crossing over the, 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 to, the crossing over to hardcore. These casuals that email me now are saying, you know what, Porky, you were right. That's what I told you years ago, didn't I? You know what I mean? I don't... Oh, what, the, what, the bell you come back? Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't get that right, did I? The bell you'll come back. But you never know. It's still, there's still time for him to come back in. But... I told you, he'll fight to Sora next year. Yeah, well, when I, I said it, didn't I, before anybody, but 
I mean, I got that right, didn't I, about Dave Caldwell? I mean, people keep saying to me, Porky, how did you know Dave Caldwell were going to be in corner for Dillian White? Well, I'm going to let you all into a little secret. I didn't know. I just meant, I just did a video the other day about trainers that tap fighters up, and I happened to mention that how it works is you get somebody like Caldwell, you train in Bellew, and he thinks to his son, who can I get to spar Bellew? So I'll ring... I'll, I'll get Chisora on board because he's Bellew's mate. Once he gets Chisora up there in Rotherham sparring Bellew and they pay him, blah de blah and Don Charles is not there, that's when Caldwell goes to work on him. Am I right, Terry? Facts. So back up, 15 months. This is all in the public domain. It's not like I've got moles and fucking people telling me stuff and I've got people's gyms bugged. It's all there for your eyeballs. Go on social media. You'll see Dave Caldwell on IFL saying, yeah, well, what I did, I text Dillian and he texts me back, respecting me and asking how my me, me family were and blah, blah, blah. And we've got respect and we've been DMing and talking and blah, blah. That's how it fucking starts, right? That's how it starts. The sneakiness of it. And don't forget, I don't fucking know Coldwell, mate, mate, but people I know know him. And he's not the only fucking one as well, let me tell you. And that's how it works, but it's the nature of the beast. It's no different to somebody like Dennis, who's got engineering companies, and somebody being a good setter or a tool maker or whatever, and him saying, oh, could do we get him from that company to come and make these parts here for Rolls-Royce or Aerospace or whatever? Because that's what he does, isn't it? They're going to want the Dennis is going to want the best setters, isn't it, and the best tool makers. And if there's a better one, oh. he's going to do it, isn't he? It's it's, it's, a, it's a bit more subtle than that, right? Oh yeah, I know. So, it's the sneakiness, isn't it? Because we're dealing in humans. We're dealing in people, Terry. We're dealing in look. You know, I'm a fighters man, don't you? You know, on a Monday morning, when everybody gets paid after a show, I'm always back in the fighter. Well, let me tell you this. We're dealing in pieces of fucking meat here with kids. I mean, I'm a 50-year-old man, but we're talking kids here, age 20 to, to, to like 35. The, kid, the fighters, right, but the mob, they're all being manipulated. And when you've got people looking at, looking at how to get their next bit of money, don't forget Coldwell's been a promoter and he's lost money on shows, so he knows the game inside out. He is a good boxing bloke, I don't like to say it, but he knows it inside out. But I don't like the fucking sneakiness of it. Yeah, how are you doing? Are you all right? What that is, it's sounding them out for down the line. And that's what he did. I don't, okay, no, no, Russ, hold on. No, hold on. So, so let's start with, let's start right at the top, right? These trainers are essentially businesses, right? Those gyms, those gyms don't pay for themselves. You're paying, look, if, let's say you've got a gym in London. You're probably paying... Anywhere from 100 to 160 grand a year, including business rates. You're paying that for your gym. So you need fighters in your gym that can generate purses of at least 2 million quid. Yeah. Right? So let's say one of your guys retires. Let's say a heavyweight retires. What are you going to do? You're going to go, right, I've either got to get two little guys to fill that gap or I'll go and find myself a heavyweight. Yeah, exactly. But you already know someone's going to retire because you're with this fighter day in, day out. You know they've seen better days. So you start getting these young kids into spa and you go, okay, what are you going to do after the Olympics? Oh, I'm going to turn over. Okay, cool. You start grooming them. That's what I do is you groom them. I've seen every trainer do this. Every trainer I've been in a gym with has done that. They groom them. But it's not even, it's, it's as simple as this. You need someone to keep your business going. There's nothing worse for a trainer than losing your highest billing staff. So when Bellew, everyone should have known this, when Bellew retired, Dave was always looking for another big ticket fighter. He, he tried Derek, it didn't quite work out. So you can imagine what, look, look at the picture. So I'm just going to portray what, I, what I've seen, okay? No accusations, no hints, nothing. Dillian and Derek fought twice. Dillian didn't think he'd ever need to rematch Derek. He thought he'd stop him in the first fight, right? Mm -hmm. So after the two fights, where basically some people argue Chisora won the majority of the rounds across the two fights. 
So you're now going, Jesus, how did people get him in that shape? How was he that tactically smart? How was he that disciplined? So you go, okay, who are the key factors in this? Dave Caldwell and Ruben Tabaris. Right? Because when he was in London, when Derek was in London training, he was training with Ruben Tabaris. So now all of a sudden, you see those two guys in Dillian's camp. What did Mayweather do when he fought Pac? Hmm? Flavor of the month. Not even that, but what did Mayweather do when he fought Pacquiao? He got Alex Ariza in because he said, if you're the guy that got Pacquiao ready, I might need you. Once he had the Khan's guy in, though, or Pacquiao's? He was Pacquiao's. And then Amir Khan got the benefit because he was obviously part of the wild card. So so guess what I'm saying is, in boxing, we know who can do what across everything. And you're always trying to get close to that because you want that perfect setup. You know, then... You know, there's stuff that we'll talk about off the grid, but look, there's a reason why boxers use certain supplement companies. There's a reason why boxers use certain ex-bodybuilders in their team. There's reasons why boxers use these people. It's not necessarily that they're the best in the business, but they're the right people to have in your corner. Yeah. Interpret that how you want. Well, if you've got the right people in the corner... They're people like Colwell, aren't they? Because they've got Eddie Earns here, aren't they? That's more than that, Russ. Like, you, you can figure the rest of it out. Yeah, it's well, making I'll sure go. that everything... It's making sure nothing goes wrong, right? Yeah. That's exactly what you want. You want nothing to go wrong. But nobody can say that... Nobody can't say that Dave Colwell's not been there and done it because he has, Annie, he? And he's an experienced trainer. Maybe, maybe this boxing thing's wrong... wrong wrong thing for me because I always fall out with any sort of little things I mean we're, we're not 100% at the moment because I've flipped my lid over something because there's little tiny things that happen and I just go berserk and I haven't last couple of weeks I, 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 some things I just don't agree with and then it's mate you've got to make you, you got to make your peace with it yeah, like, this is what yeah. I say yeah, it, yeah. It, so, so boxing is like the Amazon River Porky right it's always going to flow towards the sea. You're not going to turn that around, my friend. So you can swim against the current. You can swim with the current. You decide. Yeah, I always seem to be butting heads. I've been in meetings and, and I've heard stuff. And then I've just gone, whoa, 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 whoa. That can't be right. And Dennis has gone, oh, you're still wet behind your ears. And I'm like, well, don't start me with that, Dennis. I said, how can, how can you do all that? And he said, well, that's just how it is. And I'm like, well, that ain't right. And, and, and there's, there's, there's things all the time that I don't agree with. And I, and I just think it's, a, it's flawed. It's a flawed business, isn't it? I'm like, come no, in. Russ, Russ. Yeah, go on. I'll give you an example, right? When I was a kid, I had a job digging trenches, right? They were building an Asda supermarket and I had a job. And our job was to dig trenches for the foundation, right? And mate, you know this is backbreaking work. I don't care what anyone says. Any trench diggers out there, I respect you. Backbreaking, mate. You're joking. <laughs> Go on, yeah. Yeah. So, so they had a mechanical digger just next to us, and no one was using the mechanical digger. Yeah. And I'm like, why the why the hell aren't you using the mechanical digger? We'd be done in a day. So one time I came back in the evening, right, snuck in, in the evening, and done done a bit of digging myself. Yeah. Next day. I get called into to the gaffer's office and he fires me. I'm like, why are you firing me? He's like, we know you're the guy that uses the mechanical digger. It's like, well, you don't know that. You're, you're assuming that, but okay. And he just, so he said something. He goes, look, I could have used that digger to dig the whole trench, but then these guys wouldn't have had any money, right? By not using the digger, these guys have a lot more work coming their way. And so they can feed their families. And so I, the lesson I learned from that, Russ, as a kid was, there's always a bigger picture. And even though something looks messed up, when you look at it, and you've got to always look at it in context of the bigger picture. What else is really happening here? And boxing is pretty similar. So you might see someone take less money for a fight today, but further down the line, they get more money. And it's, it's those sorts of games that you've got to be able to, to understand and to take in. Because I had to learn all of that stuff as well. Like when we'd have Frank Maloney pop into the gym and and sit down Action. with all the old heads. Back to the wall, Frank's in. Nah, nah, but you know, like, and he'd come and he'd explain loads of stuff, and I'd hear the story, 
And then I just understood that there's a bigger game in this boxing thing. Yeah. You know, it, it's in boxing, it's outside boxing. There's just a bigger game. And there's some serious hitters involved in this. I just don't agree with some of the rules. It's, it, everything is designed for the fighters to be manipulated like pieces of meat on ticket deals and things. Right. I just don't agree with it, man. Okay, so, so let me ask you something, Porky. Yeah. Who has access to the board on a regular basis? Promoters and managers. Who seems to do the best out of boxing? Promoters and managers. Not a coincidence, is it? I know, yeah. Until it's fighters are represented. A Trainers get a raw deal and fighters get a raw deal. For example, yeah. I'm not going to say who. I'm not going to mention names here because it would get me in a lot of trouble. I know a certain fighter who, years ago, maybe 10, 12 years ago, got a million pounds for a fight, right? But he didn't get a million pounds because... When when he actually got his money, it, there were like there were nothing left of it, and I thought, well, that, that can't be right, can it? Because everybody had eat, eaten off it, so the fighter didn't get the million; he got maybe a third of it. And I think, well, why don't they just say you're getting three hundred grand to start with? Why do all these people have to have a piece of it? What do they do? They're not in the ring, are they? Uh, it's, I don't know. I just, I just don't. I just think it's unfair, mate. I understand all this, like managers and all that, but I think there should just be a trainer and a fighter. Trainer should manage, and he should train. There should be a, the trainer should be the manager. All these other managers and these advisors, in my opinion, they need to fuck off. They no, wait, wait, hold trainer, on. No, 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 no. Trainer, no, no, manager, no, no, no. and that's it. No, 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 no. Hold on. The problem with having a trainer manager is there's a conflict of interest, right? Now, if I'm being paid for doing both jobs, am I really going to guide you the right way? Or am I going to guide you the way that makes more sense to me financially? You actually want a separation of roles because you want the manager to come and say, look, they've offered us three fights. The trainer goes, here's the one that's most likely for us to win. And if the manager goes, well, it's not the most lucrative one, at least you're having a discussion. If the manager and manager and the trainer are the same person, you don't even get that discussion with us. Do you see what I mean? All right, then, Terry. Look, all right, then, look at it like this, right? For example, and I'm going to name names here. Joe Gallagher, right? He's a manager trainer, so he's on a third. So if, so if, Fred, if, Callum, if Liam Smith's on a million quid, Joe Gallagher's going to take home 333,000. He's not in the ring. And what does a manager do that a trainer doesn't do? What, what, what can somebody actually detail a manager's fucking job in boxing? A promoter rings up, do you want this fight? Well, first of all, he's going to go to fighter. Oh, do you want to fight Fred Bloggs? Fighter's going to go, oh, no, that's an hard fight for me. Or oh, he's going to go, how much? And that's it. That's all a fucking manager does. The trainer does everything, right, in my opinion. Everything goes through the trainer, right? So the trainer should do the managing. You only agree in a fight. A manager doesn't do fuck all. He might drive you to an event. I mean, what the fuck are these managers getting paid for? He's pimping, okay, so Russ, uh, He's pimping fighters' purses. I don't agree with it. No, Russ. It, it, the challenge you have with managers is that it basically creates these really perverse incentives. So a manager... And look, let, let's just say I'm a manager in South Yorkshire. All I'm going to do is hoover up bodies. I don't care if you're any good or not, as long as you can hold your hands up pimping, and you're fitting up your four round It's pimping, isn't it? It's pimping. Yeah. Well, people want to be pimped. That's the thing, right? They want to be pimped. How many of these boxers could self manage? They could easily self manage, right? They could self manage. Brought self to. managers. Bell, you did. Dillian White yeah. does. Yeah. If you're saying that it's that easy, Russ, why don't more of these guys self-manage? The why do the boxing board of control make people wait three years before they can self-manage? That means they've got to have their arseholes pimped out for three years before they can have a manager. So that means that somebody has to fucking leech on them for three years. Why can't they just say, right, here you go, there's your licence, you're a fighter now, do you want a manager then? Because the trainer's going to advise them anyway, so why don't the board fuck off Managers, fuck them no, up. Russ, Russ, Russ. Yeah. You'll always need someone, right, 
to to handle the logistics. All that stuff like logistics about what? Fucking get the fighters to no, 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 you, no, 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 Russ. You gotta get people to the venue. You gotta make sure everything's set up. You gotta make sure people are paid and so forth. Because if you're a fighter, look, and I, I, let's say let's take let's start at the top. Let's take Joshua. Joshua just wants to think about winning fights and winning titles and being a family man, pretty much. So he wants to delegate as much of his life to other people as he can. Yeah. Now, if you're like you said, bros, a fighter's got to wait three years before he can self-manage. But in those three years, how much money are you really make? Let's be honest. Not from much. debut in three years, you're not losing out on that much. No. So there's no problem there. So after three years, you self-manage. Now you're like, okay, I'm self-managing now. And you'll see a lot more of that money. Now it makes sense. So I, so I don't think the model's bad. I think the problem with the model at the moment, Russ, is managers shouldn't be getting 25%. I think managers, like in other sports, should just get 10% of what they generate. That yeah. is all. Yeah, I think, that a tra- I think that a manager, if you can get a trainer manager, that's brilliant. I mean, 15% should be enough, shouldn't it, to train and manage somebody. And then you'll get the other yeah. 85, don't you? If you're a but, fighter. Yeah. But you know what it's about, Russ? It's, it's an all boys club, right? So everyone, they love to keep boxing in that tight little Let circle. Let me tell you this, mate. I'm going to bring the border control to its knees one day. That's my dream. So all you border controls who are watching my channel, beware, because I'm fucking coming for you. You're all scumbags. Well, cheers. Sorry boss. about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. So how, 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 about, how about I don't apply for a license now? I'm never going to get... I've been knocked back, Anna, now, so apparently... Listen, once you knock me back, so have you ever been in trouble, Russell? Oh, well, not for any worth, anything worth bragging about. And they've got ex-chief of police there with, with a big list. And a picture of me when I used to have flat top, I thought, oh, fucking, I'm fucked here. So listen, it's... Ah, oh, where's that, that picture? Hey, Where's that picture? I need to see Porky with a flat top. I'll send you it in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> now, listen, I just don't agree. With, I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it. I think there's too many leeches, and I think we need... You've got people, right? All these boxing border control people, they're all 60-odd, 70-odd, some are even early 80s. The leeches, mate. Fucking leeches. And it's an old boys' club, and it's been going on for years. We need a new governing body to run it like they do the Premier League. All the 20 teams in the Premier League play each other twice a year. Why can't they do this with boxing? Why have we got Tyson Fury and AJ not fighting? Dylan White and AJ not fight, fighting a rematch. Dylan White don't mention Caballero. He don't mention Joe Joyce. He don't mention Daniel Dubois. Really. He has nightmares about him. He comes out in a cold sweat. Why, 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 aren't, why ain't Yui Fury in the mix, but yet other people are in the mix and they haven't achieved more than Yui. Yui won a British title off a champion, Dillian, uh, as, as, uh, won, a, won a vacant belt. Why is he on his fifth pay-per-view and Yui's not even on his first? I don't get it. I, it, it seems to be if you face... No, wait, 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 wait. No, I'm going to ask you a question, right? Go on, yeah. you, you, you had to pick one of two tickets. You're either going to go watch a Dillian White fight yeah. And you're not paying for it, or Huey Fury fight. Who are you really going to go and watch? Well, Dillian White's more exciting fighter because he's got a more exciting style. Huey's more of a school boxer. He's a mover, isn't he? He's a counterpunch. No, 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 no. no. Who, who are you going to go and watch? I'll go and watch Huey because I'm friends with Huey and his dad, aren't I? So I would go, go and watch them. Okay. So, I just wanted to be clear about that. But in your heart of hearts, you know the answer is Dillian. Most people would pay for most, pe- most fans would say Dillian would be in an exciting fight, but Yui's not been given his chance, really, has he? Yet? Come on, he's only Whoa, well, well, no, wait, wait, wait. He had his chance with Joseph Parker. He had his chance with Povetkin. I how thought he beat Joseph Parker. Parker. Well, the judges didn't. Well, I so how, many cha- how many chances does he need? He's had his chance. Let, let's be clear, right? Huey Fury has fought for a world title. Dillian White hasn't. So in terms of who's had the chances, yeah. he's had his chances. Dillian White's also knocked you back. Well, why don't Dillian White fight Yui? Oh, uh, because they're brothers. <laughs> <laughs> don't you remember that? Well, what? Don't you remember that? When, when it was first floated for the British title, 
And then they'll just then it was like, nah, nah, me and Huey were like brothers and then, Yeah, 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 because they sparred together, yeah. Well, this is how I look at it, right? Boxing has to change to move forward, Terry. It's got to change because the big fights, they're not happening, Terry, are they? And do you know what? I'm really fearful of sport here. It's on its knees and I put my back into this for five and a half years, mate, and not took a penny out of it. I put myself in a position to do this for six or seven years and I'm starting to think, do you know what? Maybe he's sat in a porter cabin. <laughs> waiting for somebody to come and look at a dodgy fucking Mondeo was a little bit better than doing this, mate, because there's no money in this for me. It's a passion that's sort of crossed over into nearly nearly earning summer. But point I want to make is, am I wasting my fucking time here going around in circles wanting fights that are not fucking happening? All right, so, so let, 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 let's look at where we are in Britain right now. Go on, yeah. Everything's behind closed doors, right? Yeah. For, for until we know better, everything's behind closed doors. Yeah. So Joshua Joshua's not coming out. Be absolutely clear about this. Joshua is not fighting in Eddie Hearn's back garden. Joshua's not fighting in a TV studio. He is not doing that because that doesn't do anything for his legacy. So take Joshua off the table if there are no fans. Fury is off the table if there are no fans. Bob's just not doing the fight. Right? The, you, once you start to take these guys off. Canelo's struggling because they want Canelo to fight Callum Smith. He doesn't want to. Yeah. And so, so you're having all of these struggles because you could take the piss before when the fans were paying to come in the gate and you could be you know, dismissive of fans. But now you need the fans to, to regularly pay for content via pay-per-view. If you don't buy the stuff, they'll get increasingly desperate and they'll have to put their best guys in with each other. The key thing is, and I don't want to say this because I sound like a hater, just don't buy this pay-per-view. If you don't buy the pay-per-view, it forces them to try harder. If you buy the pay-per-view, there's no reason to try harder. It's up to boxing fans. That's the reality of it. Yeah, you're probably right there, mate. You're probably right. It's, uh, it's a dodge. It's, you know what Steve Bunce what, said to me? Dennis' his dad's funeral he said... Uh, he cut Steve Bunce calls it the old, not not cess, but the old summit games. There's a word Steve Bunch uses for boxing: the old dirty game, the old dirty business. And I, I got. But he's part of that. No, no, but he's part of that. He's part of the problem. Why is he? Don't you have a bunch? Think, I like him. No, nah, listen. Think about think about Steve Bunce, right? Steve Bunce is the ultimate yes man on TV, doesn't really have an opinion, doesn't have anything controversial to say, will always tell you a fight's great. I mean, he's, he's like an over-enthusiastic five-year-old, and that's not bad. Like, I know Buncey personally. Obviously, he's, he's Eggs Lodge, and he comes to the shows. So I know Steve. But I also know what Steve really knows about the sport. And so when I see Steve shilling for BT Sport, just basically anything for a few quid, that's, that's part of the problem, Russ. It's a gravy train that people don't want to come off because it's an easy way to make a living if you do what you're, if you do as you're told. Uh, so is, is it people like me who don't get uh, the coldest that they expect because I'm outspoken and I just tell it straight? So am I a casualty of being too honest and forthright with my views? Is that what you're saying? Well, no, no. So... You know my views already, Porky, so I'll say this again. I never understand why people dislike you because how many times have people sat around in boxing? No, no. How many times have people sat around in boxing going, I wish people would stop, stop feeding me rubbish. I wish people would give me the truth. I wish people would be honest about the sport. And then Porky Rush shows up and that's what he gives you. And people still want to complain. People still want to hate. Yeah, but Terry, I, you know, when you come to our shows, right, and I get, obviously, I have a table every show. My table's got about 20 people on it, and it not 10, 20. And everybody seems to be happy, don't they? Everybody, yeah. We all have a good time, don't we? 
<laughs> certain individuals don't like it when I target them on their bullshit. Isn't that right, Dominic Ingle? I know you're watching. If you have a four fighter fail in next 12 months, a PED test, I'm calling for your license to be withdrawn from the border control. Because if that were Alex Ferguson or Jose Mourinho, they'd be kicked out at Premier League. So why should you get away with it? How's about that one? I mean, my four views like that. Well, I mean, we've got trainers and they've had three fighters fail dope tests. But it's okay. He's not even had his license took off him. So that means that this bodybuilder whose fighters are failing for performance enhancing drugs, it's okay for him to have a fucking border control license and be telling people that I'm a silly sausage. Well, Dominic, when I see you, I'll tell you to your fucking face. Is that all right for you? Hey, you know, I hope, I hope the fans can relate to that. Well, the Please fans like will relate to it because the spotlight is on Dominic Ingle now. So one more and that will be a fourth. But yet, will he still be allowed to keep his fucking license? I mean, what sort of fucking border control have we got overseeing the fucking sport when you've got trainers and the fighters are failing fucking dope tests? And nobody's saying a fucking word. Um, Russ, I'm gonna have a fucking Russ. ulcer. I'm not, hang on a minute, hang on, because I think I'm having a Tony Bellew moment. You know, like when I want to get them ulcers. When I see Tony yeah. Bellew, I get this feeling in my chest. I've just had the same yeah. feeling. I'm okay now. I'm okay. It's okay, fans. I'm okay. <laughs> so, Russ, what, what, what do you think about drug cheats in boxing? Well, I've got no time for drug cheats at all. Uh, Eddie Hearn goes on about it. He even did a video where he brought down crying, didn't he? When one of his fighters on his show died and he was crying. Oh, oh Pat that. Patrick Day. But yeah, that were on the Sunday morning, early hours, on the fucking Tuesday. Sorry for swearing. He's making a fight between drug cheats. But yeah, he's going on about safety is paramount. Let's kick him out of the sport, bloody fucking blood, and crying his eyes out on the Tuesday. He's making fights with drug cheats. Oh, it's okay. We'll just forget about the weekend. The fucking body's still warm on slab. But nobody says a fucking word, do they? Not a fucking word. Ah. It wiles me up. That's the porky we needed, man. I, I thought the episode was a bit too sensible for a while. I, I needed that porky. The old porky. The... The, the Edlington legend, Porky. You know that fucking old Edlington now, kid. I've gone big time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Moving on, then. We've got... Uh, oh, we're all right, yeah. Moving on, Terry. Uh, where do you think old fish eyes, a.k.a. Bricktop, a.k.a. Frank Warren... Where do you think he's going now in boxing? Is he on Skid Row? Now that he's you know, I, I like Frank, right? But I think we all need to be brutally honest. And I think this is across all the promoters. What they've served up this summer has been terrible. It's been embarrassing to watch. And it's almost like if this is the best that British boxing can offer in the time of crisis, it's a sport we don't need. Th Russ, I'm being honest with you. The fight I was most looking forward to this summer was Umar Sadiq versus Lerone Richards. Why? It was for the British and Commonwealth title, so you know it's legit. Yeah, but Lerone Richards is your mate, isn't he? No, Umar Sadiq's my mate. I know no, Lerone, Umar, Umar, Umar Sadiq, mate. sorry, yeah, yeah. And is he uh, no, Mark no. Theobald's mate as well, isn't he? Yeah, he's your mate as well, Porky. Well, Martin. Well, everyone. We're all your mates. <laughs> you go on, lad. Go on, lad, team Porky. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, mate, look. That was it, right? British title fight, Commonwealth title fight. Two guys who are roughly the same age. You know, one, three years a pro. One, seven years a pro. Yeah. Roughly the same number of fights, if we're being honest. And got, both guys believe they can beat each other. And there was real needle between the two of them. Yeah. I was like, okay, Frank, make this fight happen. And he found every reason not to make that fight happen. And then we just got, we, we just got some terrible fights. That's what we really got. Like, you know... The only way they could have made it worse was to put Sonny Edwards on there, for God's sake. Yeah. But, it, so Frank, Frank just, look, that card he did the other night was terrible. 
It was disgusting. It's embarrassing. Did you see the it? opponent's box set ranking that I put on my channel? 373, the opponent ranking. They had Carl Frampton, box set number six, in with a guy ranked 361. I mean, what the fuck? The guy could have got killed. Nah, uh, look, it, it, was, it, was, it was terrible. It was terrible. I'm sure Frank Sisson regrets it, but I don't think he cares. Fra Frank, Frank's waiting for the crowds to come back because he'll never make money on pay-per-view. BT is too small a platform. So he's got to wait for the crowds to come back. But yeah, I, I, look, I, I think he's in a dark place. I think Hearn's in a dark place. And I'll tell you why, Paul. Why? Look at, look at what's happening in America. They're going to give us Danny Garcia versus Errol Spence. Confirmed. They're going to give us Lomachenko versus Teofimo Lopez. Confirmed. I mean, Canelo against someone will be confirmed soon. What I'm basically saying, Russ, is the Americans have just gone hard. Like, would you not want to see Errol Spence versus Danny Garcia? Of course you do. Would I what? Would you not want to see Errol Spence against Danny Garcia? I think well, so would. Yeah, it's a great fight, that. Yeah. Teofimo Lopez versus Loma. Great fight. All right. Al Heyman's the man at the moment. He's been the man for a long time. People just didn't want to give him his credit. Because he doesn't do IFL interviews. He's not there on boxing. He social. doesn't do interviews with anybody. We don't even know yeah. if he exists. He's like that bloke in Charlie's Angels or Satin Chair who you never see. <laughs> you see the Dolly Birds, but you don't see Charlie, do you? He's but, that but, man. But look, Javante Davis against Leo Santa Cruz. I forgot that one as well. Look at the fights the Americans are putting together. These are fights fans wanted to see. I never wanted to see Cheeseman versus Eggington. I, I, in fact, I, I don't want to see Eggington again. Do you see what I mean? I, Hearn just dug up stuff we didn't care about. We, the Americans are like, look, we're going to charge you pay-per-view. Yeah, I know, but there are no fans. Bear with us. But we're going to give you fights you want to see. Like, these are fights you said you'd pay for, guys. So we're going to give you the fights. Yeah. And over here, we just... We, oh, mate. It's, I think the reality is this, Russell. British boxing isn't that good. We no. don't have a lot of talent. We, we oversell our talent. Joshua's not that good in my eyes. Fury's not that good in my eyes. Billy Joe's okay, but he's untested. Um, Frampton's on his way out. Josh Taylor's probably the only guy we've got in Britain who's a legit world-level fighter. Joshua? Josh Taylor. So you're saying he's pound for pound number one in country? I think so, based on who he's beaten, based on what he's I done. Tyson yeah. Fury, man, I mean, look, is that... No, nah. no. Nah. You're going on the fact that Tyson Fury's only got two world title wins. Not really that, Russ. It's... I look he's at never Fury, I'm like... the belt yet, is that what you're saying? No, I'm just saying Tyson looks good in what I'd say is a relatively rubbish era, right? Yeah. Josh Taylor is fighting guys who we think are good and he's going to fight guys who think are good, guys like Ramirez, and then he'll probably move up and fight Crawford. Josh Taylor's the guy where, like, Britain should be getting behind. Not Fury. I'm, I'm, I'm neither here nor there on Fury, to be honest with you. I, I just think when, when you can be the way Tyson is and kind of just jump in and out of the sport when you feel like it, how good is everyone else? They must be pretty rubbish. Do you yeah. see what I mean? Uh, and then the other example of just why boxing's in trouble. Did you see the DAZN show last weekend? That were awful, you, wasn't it? Tulsa, Oklahoma, Porky. Yeah, do you know what I thought they were going to do? I thought they were going to dig Alan Green up because he was trying to give in on action money. Do you remember him, Alan yeah. Green? Yeah. He used to be Frotch's sparring partner up here at EIS. Alan Green, he, he, big, massive puncher as well. But I thought they were going to dig him up, you know, 10 years later. <laughs> yeah, I think he put Frotch down a couple of times. Fuck off, he never even laid a glove on him, mate. No, he did. I've got video. Fuck off, man. He never laid a glove on him. But he's a tough guy, Alan Green. And him and Carl Frotch got on okay. But let me tell you this, mate. Alan Green nearly ended up on that show of Eddie's. That's how bad it were, mate. Could you imagine that? Digging Alan Green up. Imagine like imagine you're the zone. You go okay. So Eddie, what what's the show you're going to give us? Uh, so you're going to get Cecilia Breakers versus Jess McCaskill as your main event. Ah, they jumped out the top floor window, man. Like that's when you know you're done in boxing. Oh, well, what's the headline? That got it. Well, what was the headline? That's that's one they were selling it on. 
Oh, sorry, I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't know. I thought that was chief support. If that were headline act, that's shocking, isn't it? Uh, someone used to describe that as Baba. Baba. So <laughs> what? Uh, what next then for Eddie? Because you know, when you look at his stable, take Anthony Joshua out of that stable, and he and he technically Anthony Joshua is. He fought like a frightened man. In sorry, he were gun shy in Saudi. Sorry, won he against Ruiz? He were gun shy. So take him out of the stable, Terry. Who is the really that's pay per view? Now I've just done an interview with Rico, and I've said to Rico, look, Dillian White don't want a world title because they're not going to let him have one. He's the other pay per view guy, isn't he? In six months' time, is it possible that we could be hearing Dillian White? Saying he's still being shafted by governing bodies. Do you think so? Don't be surprised. Because think about this, right? The longer you delay Fury Wilder 3, the more people start saying, well, why is Dillian still number one? He hasn't defended that number one spot for a while. He might, they'll make him defend it again. If we get to next summer and he hasn't fought Fury, they'll make him defend that spot again. Yeah. I mean, I'm no, looking look. around in circles with Dillian White and da- Gareth A. Davis. I mean, you know Gareth A. Davis, right? I'm starting to wonder if he's going to go up to Claremont. You know, when I went up to Claremont at Sheffield and they relieved me a yeah. second grand for a gastric band. Well, let me tell you this. Gareth A. Davis needs to go up there and get his tongue removed from Eddie Hearn's arsehole, mate, and Dylan White's because he's going on about this thousand-day mandatory thing and they keep pushing it, and you've got Coogan there asking the questions. Why don't they just say, no, that's technically not right? When somebody leads off saying, yeah, Dillian's been messed about for a thousand days, he should have had his title shot. Why isn't Coogan, who's been around it for 10 years, saying, whoa, Gareth, whoa, that is not technically true? And it isn't, is it? He's been offered world title shots. He's, he's been in purse bids for final eliminators and, and, and refused. And they sent Yui Fury, what, 23-year-old out there to Bulgaria. And he'd been cutting sparring before. So why, why couldn't Dylan White... Sorry, why couldn't Gareth A. Davies come out with stuff like that? Because they're too busy selling the narrative like that Dillian White's been poorly... Um, sorry, badly done to. And this and that. Dillian White's had ample opportunity to fight for a fucking world title and fight for eliminators. And his arsehole's gone because he's the spare wheel for Eddie Hearn. He's the other pay-per-view guy. There's no Bellew there. There's no Carl Frotch there no more. They're gone. There's Dillian White and Joshua. Joshua's not even fighting. They need crowds. Dylan White's not fought for a fucking European. So why are we hearing about him crying about title shots for world titles? He's not fought for a fucking EBU. Oh, I'm going to end up with an heart attack. Ah, poor guy. I would end up with an ulcer, a bellu. We call it a bellu because he is a fucking ulcer, aren't you, bellu? I know you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you kill me, Paul. You kill me. Oh, you know, <laughs> I, I would tell it straight, don't I? It's the voice of our car boxing shout out innovation alloy, South Yorkshire packaging, Coca Cola, who else? Lacoste. They're hanging out at back of me now, aren't they? You mind all these free goods and T-shirts and watches, watch finder. Give me some reddies. Hand <laughs> yeah. over, the, and over the swag. You what, mate? You got more sponsors than Joshua right now. All he needs is the Range Rover. Yeah, I could do a le- hey, could do a lease Range Rover. I'll have to get, I'll have to get, uh, I'll have to get Kev to get into somebody and get me one. I'll get rid of my Merc and put some Dowick Bank and have a freebie car. Uh. If you can't have cash, we'll have goods. <laughs> I'm like bailiff's on if you're not going to be cash we'll take goods but no see getting back to the boxing Terry I am pretty fearful at the moment of where it's heading for example what, what what's going to happen to Dennis what, what, uh, Sheffield where all this uh, and Steve Crump what's going to happen with them now I, I nah, Dennis will just manage right pardon like, like Dennis will just manage so yeah. so yeah, Den- Dennis is a survivor. He- he'll, know- he'll know where he is in the landscape and he'll just flip from... Well, look, he's not skint, is he? He's got all the businesses he can fall back on and so Steve Crump. But as regards the fighters that Dennis manages, what's going to happen with them now? What's going to happen with Tommy Frank? 
uh, Josh Whale, Cash Cash Alley, all them kids. What? Where were they? Then, then they their names for sale, Paul. You know that. Their names. Well, for sale. I mean, I'd like to see Dave Allen in we uh, Cash Alley. Yeah. I mean, uh, they keep talking Dave Allen up for fights with X X amount, X amount, X amount, but he's not won an area belt yet. Cash has won one, so as far as I'm concerned, Dave needs to get in line, doesn't he? And go back to the beginning and fight Tom Little, Cash Alley, yeah. Nick Webbery match, stuff like that. You can't be talking about fight, oh, I'm two fights away from Joshua. What? You don't want a fucking area belt. What the fuck? Oh, he's funny on Twitter, funny on Instagram. Yeah, he is funny. I've fucking, many a time I've walked up in the middle like laughing at Dave Allen, stuff he comes out with. He, he is very funny, but... Let's forget the fucking funniness and let's look at what Dave Allen's achieved in boxing. He hasn't won a fucking belt yet. And he's knocking fights back with the bar and dictating terms about Yui Fury fights, the bar, and what were the other one? Martin Bacoli. What the fuck? Is this where we're heading now? Well, you can't offer me that. I'm funny on Twitter. What the fuck is this? Is this KSI or Logan Paul? Because they're fucking Twitter fucking social media fighters, aren't they? What, where, where, where are we heading? Are we, heading, are we crossing over from f- boxing license holder to well, a funny YouTuber with a fucking pair of boxing gloves? Because that's fucking white collar, mate, isn't it? Russ. What? Is that too fucking raw for you, that? Is that intense beef or is that raw beef? Oh, that's raw. That's definitely that's raw it's with it's a bit of seasoning. Laughing lobster or fucking funny pheasant. What were it? No, do you know what, Russ? When I look at boxing, my laughing worry lunch actually... Me. Laughing lunch and me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go on, yeah. sorry. Go on. Go on. Go on. <laughs> sorry, go on. So, go on. What worries me is actually, like, there's no amateur boxing so the kids aren't even in the gyms at the moment. The kids are just doing other stuff, right? And it won't take them long till they fall in love with something else that's not boxing. Yeah. And then you've got a lost generation. And then that lost generation... Could be a future world champion. You know, so, like Tim Witherspoon's era, all them boys, they did a film about it, didn't they? I haven't seen that. Tim Witherspoon, Tony Tubbs, Pinkland Thomas, Mike Weaver, uh, all them guys from that era, they were like the lost generation. Tony Tucker, they called them the lost generation, didn't they? Oh, because Tyson basically wiped them out. So we'll never know how good they really were. I'd yeah. like to have seen a few of those guys in the 90s when they were at their best. Can you imagine Tim Witherspoon now fighting somebody like Anthony Joshua? Take him to school. Yeah. Frank Bruno would do Joshua, wouldn't he? Yeah, Frank's, un- Frank's yeah, underrated. Listen, Jack, listen, if Frank couldn't do Joshua with Jab, he'd just pull his chopper out and knock him straight out with it, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah, He's not yeah, known in boxing circles as Big Frank for notes. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> I think beers are kicking in now and God knows what else. But I'm just telling it as I see it. I just think the era is weak. Do you know what I mean? The era's weak. Russ, you know what? It, I'll tell you what it is, right? Well, what? We're not breeding tough kids anymore. Yeah. That's the reality of where we are in Britain, right? It's a social problem. We don't breed tough kids. So these kids come into boxing gyms, never really had a fight on the street. Never really been tested outside of the gym. They learn to box and stuff, and that's cool. But eventually, you're going to meet someone who's got that fighting spirit, and then suddenly you realize that you're not prepared for that. That's what a lot of these lads have. That's what happened to Ted Cheeseman, I think. Ted probably never had a street fight in his life, and all of a sudden, he fought um, that Carson Jones, who definitely has had a few street fights in his life, and that took years off his career. And then he had that Garcia kid, took years off his career. And then Kieran Conway taking years off his career. And so you're breeding these kids who can box and they're technically good. And Adam Smith will tell you how many GCSEs they got. Um, you know, they'll tell you, he'll tell you that their dad used to drive a Red Rover 400 with the leather seats. He'll tell you all that stuff, but he'll never say, yeah, this kid used to fight in the streets before he took up boxing. Yeah. That's what makes Dillian White special. Dillian used to scrap in the streets. Dillian's a legit hard man who's learned how to box. But he's like the exception and not the rule. So if you want boxing to improve in this country, you've got to have more Dillian Whites. And then you just want to teach him to box a little better. But we don't have those right now. 
and with the gyms being shut and with boxing clubs actually closing down because they can't afford to carry on, I don't see where it comes from. Yeah. So, what, what, who do you see? Who do you see that's going to start being a little bit more diplomatic in the punditry business in boxing, Terry? Who do you see that's going to stop this fucking bias? When, when Where's Glenn McCrory? Glenn McCrory, they've got rid of Glenn, haven't they? He's a good bloke, Glenn. Bring, bring Glenn back. I like Barry Jones. I'd like to see what he does on Sky because Sky is a very different style to what they do on BT. So I think BT is a bit more action-based, whereas Sky is a bit more storyline-based. So I want to see what Barry Jones does. When you know what I Sky. think the problem is? Do you know what I think the problem is at Sky? Bean! I think Bean's the problem because... When anybody's coming out to ring, Bean starts reeling off the script. And that's where he gives... I can feel it now. I'm getting an ulcer, Terry. Bean gives me an ulcer because I know he's got bodies under patio. I'm telling you, he's got dead bodies under that patio. I'm telling you, mate, he needs to hand himself into the cop shop with his laptop as well. <laughs> oh, God. Bean's got to hand himself in. Bean needs to hand himself in and sort the job out because there's something not there's something not right about him, mate. I'm telling you now. But the narrative that they're pushing is unbelievable. Rough, tough, rugged, durable, all action. No, no, Paul Russ, right? The narrative wouldn't bother me, right? Because I, I watch wrestling sometimes. And I know what's going to happen. But I like the fact that in wrestling, eventually the two top guys will meet that year, right? It all builds around that WrestleMania and SummerSlam, right? So I'm all right with that. If you, if, if you want to spin me a story, that's great. But you can't spin me a narrative and then I've got to watch Ted Cheeseman versus Sam Hayes. And that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but you, what you've got to understand, Terry, is, right, Ted Cheeseman, right, he's 24. Eggington's 26. They've been smashed to pieces, mate. Carl Frotch had his first pro fight when he was 24 and nine months. Ted Cheeson's not even at that age now and he's already, he's already talking like Riddick Bowe, like that. And as regards Eggington, I mean, he's going to be a limp biscuit when he's 40, isn't he, Eggington? I mean, come on. How many more times can they wheel these out? How many more times can they wheel these out to get smashed to pieces? Well, it's okay. Eggington's just put another deposit on a terraced house to rent out in Birmingham. It's okay. He'd be talking like that, won't he? It's madness. And, the, and Eddie Hearn and his old boy, Buzzing Baz, right, they're at the top of this pyramid. They're like uh, the, the New World Order, aren't they? They're controlling this and say, that's okay. Just put him back in with his cheeseman again. We'll have a rematch. Let them scramble the brains even more for 30 grand a piece. It's a joke, mate. It's an utter joke. And something needs to be done about it. I mean, can you imagine what Ted Cheeseman's going to look like when he's 35? In 10 years, what's he going to look like, Ted Cheeseman? Uh, I mean, they were talking about Charlo for Ted Cheeseman because he's beat Eggington. Is this where we're at? What would Charlo <laughs> Rob Tebbett, you're out your mind going on about that. What would Charlo do to Ted Cheeseman? Tell me. What would Scott Fitzy do to him? Fitzy would smash him up. I think Fowler beats him as well. I think Anthony Fowler beats Cheeseman. I think he beats Eggington. But what, what, what would Charlo's do to them? Charlo's, right, would bend him over and grease them both. It'd be a bloodbath. But... For Rob Tebbett to be talking, for chatting nonsense about Ted cheeseman has got to be in the mix for Charlo now. I couldn't believe it. Uh, I nearly collapsed. No, no, no one wanted to believe me when I said the stuff about Tebbett, but you guys are getting to see it live on your screens now. The guy's a clown. I mean, he's just a clown. He's a clown. You know, you know what I mean? I've just had a text off Clinton Woods. What a legend. What a legend. He's just asking me if the fight's on between Mickey Theo and John Fury. 
yeah, yeah. Morgan, what is happening with that? It's, it's sad people to watch. People keep asking me, people keep asking me if it's on. Look, I did a video and I said, look, this is how I look at it, right? I, I first met John Fury in 1989. I first met Tyson in 2008. Tyson made his debut on Froch Pascal on the car now we're inside. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. No, no, stop, stop. Where did you meet John Fury in 1989? He fought Neil Malpaz, who, 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 who was a, uh, he wasn't a friend of mine at the time, but a few years later, he ended up a good friend of mine and we sort of did some work together. But, Neil Malpass fought John Fury uh, for Central Area title. John's telling people that he took the fight at two hours' notice, which is not true because there were posters up for a couple of months before. But John <laughs> lost the fight. John lost the fight. Uh, he tried his best. He got beat. And I, I think I got John a DVD for, for a couple of years ago. Two or three or four years ago, I got him a DVD. Of the fight. It's the only fight that, you can, that you'll find. John Fury... Footage of John Fury in a fight is the only one available. Now, I did a video the other day and I said, John Fury and Mickey Fury, they need to fight. For the simple reason that there's a lot been said, they're 200 miles apart. Why don't one drive 100 mile that way and the other one drive 100 mile that way and meet in the middle and Coogan Cassius can film it and the YouTube ad money can be donated to charity. They don't need to make anything, right? It can go to charity. They can have a couple of people there, and that's that. Now, if Coogan ain't willing to do it, he probably ain't. I will do it. I'll just turn up because I'm bold as brass. I'm not really bothered about any of them. I'll turn up and I'll film it, and I'll give them the screenshots from my account. There you go. That's when it's made at first 28 days. Because after 28 days, you don't really make anything on a video. After 28 days, there you go. That's when it's made. That's the money. There you go. Get to a charity, and that's it. If they want to do that, I'll do it. I don't need to, we don't need people like managers involved in agents. Load of shit. Get them all out of the way. Get the two lads who have got the beef. Get them in the middle of a field. Get a couple of other people. They don't need 500 travellers there. They just need two from one side, two from other, and me with my camera, and I'll film it. If they want to do that, get in touch. If they don't, I'm not really bothered, but... I don't want to hear any of this back and forward nonsense on social media. That's a waste of time, Paul. It's the sort of stuff where you're like, these guys have too much time on their hands, man. Now, you know, sometimes like... Right, actually, but John looks like he's whipped his set into shape. So well done to John Fury. And the other guy looks like he's in shape all year round, doesn't he? And they're both... Look, I know John more than other guy. I've never met the other guy. Uh... John's never said no wrong about me. He used to phone. He used to phone me up here after Tyson won world title. Obviously, we're having these problems. He'd phone me up here two hours at a time. I'm not going to go into what was said because that would be overstepping mark. But the point I want to make is that John says he's a fighting man, but he ain't had a fight yet. He's a big fighting man, but he's not fighting. Mickey Fio says he's a fighting man, but he ain't fighting. So let's fight. Surely there's somebody in the middle that can bring these two titans together. Who Who is Mickey Theo anyway? I don't know. I've, I've heard he's a bit of a geezer down south. And what uh, do you know what? Mate, do you know, I'm absolutely bored of this. Yeah, You know when I was a kid mm. and they used to talk about all of these hard men? What was it? Katie Crane's hard bastard. They would always talk about these guys and person X and person Y. And they were all meant to be these hard men. But they used to get slapped about in boxing gyms for fun. Well, I mean, John's ex-professional fighter and the other the other guy's ex-professional bodybuilder. Look, if they're going to have a fight... Then... <laughs> Whatever, I don't so know. I mean, I mean, the guy's done some sparring. I'm, I've been told of somebody who had, I'm in Essex a couple of weeks ago and somebody said he can have a fight. Well, he's obviously in better yeah. shape than John. Let him fight. I say let him fight, and then that's it. And once it's over, the beef squashed, isn't it? But he's you know what? I'll, I want to see you. Out. I want to see you fight the winner. Yeah, well, I'll fight the winner. I'll fight the winner. How's about that? I'll get my head punched in. But yeah. listen, it's been going on since March now, hasn't it? Well, we're September, aren't we? In another two weeks. So, is it going to happen or what? I don't know. But I just said, look, well, I've got an idea. You drive 100 mile that way, you drive 100 mile that way, and I'll be there with my camera, and I'll put it on channel, and I'll send the check to your to a charity that you both decide. And then that's it, then we can bury it, can't we? How well, many rounds they do? 
you'd have to put them for, uh, you just have to get them at it wouldn't you until one of them quits forget all this how many rounds and putting putting obstacles in 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 middle of it and we need to fight in this arena and that arena do it for free like we started for charity because it's gone from charity to fucking agents getting involved to talking money in arenas and this and that load of shit Go do, it, go do it for free and get some get somebody filming it and put it on for charity and that's it. Or pipe down. But obviously the the I, I I'm I'm people say, Oh, you're in middle. No, I'm not in fucking middle. I just want to see him fight. I want to be there filming. And it's all about Porky V the winner, that's all I care about. Yeah, well, whatever, but at the end of the day, let him get at it. Because that's what what do you do what would you normally do after you've had a piss upon a Saturday night and you've had a beef with somebody? Look, it's Sunday morning. You're knocking on the door, aren't you, Sunday morning? You're not wanting any money then. It's about your pride. Well, this has gone on long enough now. Do you know what? Oh, it's giving me an old... It's giving me a bell, you. <laughs> it's giving me a bell, you, Tony. Uh, sorry, Terry. It's giving me a Tony bell, you, and also, look, I just want to see the fight. The Mickey, Mickey Fio seems like a gentleman. From what I've heard from people from down there, he's, he's a pretty well-respected guy. And he's got oh, a bit of polish he's, about him. Oh, proper gaze around. He proper sort he is. He's proper. He's proper. He's proper. Oh. You sound like all... Mark Tibbs. He's proper. <laughs> they're all, listen, mate. Yeah, all those guys are all fucking clowns. All these reputations are not a pot to piss in. It's sad watching these guys, man. They just need I to... Think that Mickey, I think Mickey feels has got a bit more than a pot to piss. And I think he's got a few quid like he's done well for his time. And I like to see people do well, but this is how I look at it. It's gone on for six months now, and yeah, but there's, there's been a lockdown though, Paul. <laughs> you know, there's, there's certain months where the fight couldn't have happened. Hey, listen, you've got to watch for John Fury though, because he's uh, John Fury is a very, very cunning man. I mean, five years ago he got out of prison, didn't he? Right, and he was tiptoeing around probation to see if he could get a, a permission to go see Vladimir. Now, since then. In the last five years, he's come on a bit, hasn't he? He's done yeah. well in the last five years, hasn't he? Yeah, he's got a few. And, and, and he's yeah. obviously, he obviously knows the guy wants to fight him, and he's got his set in good shape, John. So, and you know, I won't put it past John being ready and going and knocking on his door, and it might just happen. So, we're going to see, aren't we? But he's got his set in shape, he's stayed quiet for a few months, and he's ready. So, the other kid looks like Mickey Fear. He looks like he's ready all year round. So that's good, isn't it? That's good, mate. Let him get out. They'll be pals after, mate. And you know how it works, this kind of thing, Terry. They have a fight and then the mate's after them. Then it's, hey, we're just a bit of banter. We're just to sell it and all that. It's it's all knackers anyway, isn't it? Yeah, but is there going to be vital testing for this one? <laughs> I don't know if there'll be any VADA testing. <laughs> I very much doubt that, Terry. <laughs> I very much doubt that. But it is what it is, isn't it? But so we're gonna bring it to an end and hour we've gone over forty five minutes, an hour and fifteen, an hour and sixteen. But we've had a good oh, chat, haven't we? Yeah. We've had we've we've wrote a few wrongs over a few beers. <laughs> All for the views. All for the views. I'm going to pit this against Rico tomorrow now. Wow, head to head. You and Rico are going to go head to head. You were your 75 minutes and Rico is 45. I'm going to put you out <laughs> tomorrow dinner time at the same time and we'll see uh-huh. how it goes. All right, or tomorrow, All right. tomorrow afternoon or something. All right then, Terry. Hey, mate, good speaking to you. Listen, be nice speaking to you. Keep in touch and uh, keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic sport. Don't have nightmares, Terry. <laughs> Hi, take care, mate. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.